anybody. Do you have any idea what phallus means? Do you want me to tell you what phallus means? Are you sure? Are you ready for it? You're not going to faint? The word phallus means... <laughs>So part one, the dark world of Freemason. In 1 Timothy 4, 1 and 2, it says the Spirit makes it clear that as time goes on, some are going to give up on the faith and chase after demonic illusions put forth by professional liars. These liars have lied so well and for so long that they have lost their capacity for truth. 2 Timothy 3.13 says, Unscrupulous con men will continue to exploit the faith. They're, they're as deceived as the people they lead astray. As long as they're out there, things can only get worse. First, Brothers and sisters, let me just say, by no means through this teaching am I trying to attack these precious men that have pledged their allegiance or their loyalty to the great architect of the universe and to the lodge. I want to remind you that people are most precious to the Lord no matter who they are, and even more than that, Jesus died for them. Secondly, truth be told, most men involved in Freemason have no idea of what they have gotten into and how demonic the lodge truly is. And you might say, how is that, Pastor? I'll let you see that for yourself in a short moment. To fully understand how dark Freemason really is, a man must move up into the higher levels towards the 33rd degree, which most never do. Most men become satisfied with the first, second, or third degrees of the Blue Lodge. And the first three degrees is called Blue Lodge because of the importance of the blue skies and its heavenly hosts of stars and the planets. What does that mean? Off the bat, I want you to understand that Freemason is deeply involved in astrology. Astrology is extremely important to Freemason. Ancient Pagans worshipped under the starry skies, and so does Freemason. The first degree is called Entered Apprentice. The second degree is called Fellow Craft. The third degree is called Master Mason. Freemason began in the 18th century in England. Freemason is the world's largest secret society by all expressions, a coven. Now, if you don't know what a coven is, I invite you to go and look it up. I won't mention it here, or maybe I should. No, I think I'll let you go look that up. But it is the world's largest coven. Masonry has everything to do with pagan religions of the past it is based on kabbalah which is ancient jewish tradition of mysticism the shriners which is the 33rd degree the highest level of freemason is the islamic expression of freemason and is nothing but a whole lot of debauchery and hate towards christianity People like Joseph Smith. Has anybody in here ever heard of Joseph Smith? I hope he wasn't your uncle. Joseph Smith was the founder of Mormonism. He was a master mason. 
No wonder then Mormonism has close similarity with Freemason. But also the first four presidents of Latter-day Saints were also involved in Freemason. And then talk about the Jehovah's Witness. Charles Taze Russell, the founder of the Jehovah's Witness, was also a Freemason. Therefore, the very strange doctrines in Jehovah's Witness. In what way is Freemason secret? Its existence is not secret, but its rituals with its blood oaths are very, very secret. Their meetings are actually held behind guarded doors. Their buildings e either have no windows or if they have windows, the windows are either painted very dark or thick curtains are hanged so that hardly any light can even get in. A, fr a Freemason Lodge building is guarded by a man with a sword at the entrance inside. Only those who chose to sworn secrecy can enter inside. Candidates for the three degrees of Freemason, which is called Blue Lodge, are always assured that Masonry is based on the Bible. But it is not. Freemason has four main holy books that they honor, and the Bible is the least honored among them all. Freemason honors at the highest level the Quran, which is from the Muslim religion. They also have the Tanakh, which is the Hebrew Bible. They also have the Vedas, which is the Hindu holy book. And they have the Holy Bible, the Christian Bible. But the name of Jesus is completely forbidden from the lips of Freemason. As a matter of fact, and again, please remember that as I share this with you, that most men in Freemason do not know these things because these things are only revealed at higher level in Freemason. But Freemason actually printed their own Bible and they also call it the Holy Bible and it has their main symbol on it which I will share with you in a short moment but if you would open the Freemason Bible that they printed never once will you find the name of Jesus in it it is all eliminated from their Bible thus Jesus is reduced to the level of Confucius who is always confused Buddha Mohammed and all the Greek philosophers. Jesus to the Freemason has no greater importance than any of these immoral, ungodly figures. Freemason believes that in all religion there is truth and pure morality. But listen how deep it goes. They believe that even in Satanism you can find good. Well, then that would suggest that there is good in Satan. But there's none. But Freemason states that even in Satanism, even in witchcraft, and all forms of paganism, even including mutilation and voodoo, there is some form of good. And that whatever a man sincerely believes, that is the truth. And that is called relativism. Relativism. Freemason is so deceptive, brothers and sisters, that even many pastors are fully sworn into Freemason. This one is not sworn in. Will never be sworn in. But there are some top-ranking pastors around the world in mega churches, pastoring mega churches. 
that are involved in Freemason. Now you may say, but how could that even be possible? Because of the great deception that is involved in Freemason and secrecies that are only revealed in the higher levels of Freemason, even pastors gravitate towards it to their own shame and downfall. In degree 18, the degree book of Freemason tied all the above statement together by saying that masonry has the mission to bring together all men of all religion and make them one. That sounds like the one world religion to me, which is an act from the Antichrist under the Masonic banner and altar. They are told, men involved in Freemason are told that Freemason makes them better Christians. Think about the deceit there. It won't, it will just do the opposite instead. Men in Freemason say that Freemasonry make them better men. But the opposite is actually true. Many men say that Freemason is a family tradition, but truthfully, it is a family tragedy. And you will learn between today and next week what a serious tragedy it really is to the entire family of the man that is involved in Freemason. Freemason has caused untold division in families across the world. When a man turns to Freemason for whatever reason he may choose, he is actually turning his back on the living God and on Jesus Christ. Here are some reasons why men would choose to join Freemason. Number one, some sincerely are searching for the meaning of life. And they're told that the Freemason will actually give them the meaning for life. Secondly, some are searching for the answers to life. You know, there's a lot of people in the world today that are perplexed about what life is and how to live life. They're promised in Freemason that all the answers will be given to them. Thirdly, some are simply searching for brotherhood. Another word, a clique. People that they can hang out with that are doing the same things they're doing and having the same interests that they have. Fourth, some are searching for power and believe me, they find power in Freemason, in the Lodge. Some are wanting belonging and acceptance because of abandonment of their father. They grew up without a dad, some without a mom. And they find Freemason to be the place that becomes that father or that parent to them. Some want help with business connection. You might not know this. But Freemason controls Tons of businesses in the world today. And when you become a Freemason and you're busted and disgusted and, and you have no money and, and, and you want to become an entrepreneur, Freemason, the lodge sets you up and gives you connection with all of this and all of a sudden you become a business owner, a businessman and you have money because of all the influence it is involved with. Some are looking for help with influence in the community. And again, because Freemason is so deeply knotted into society, you would be amazed to find out that actually when you join the Freemason, you become a person of influence in the community. Entering the craft of Freemason is a search for light. That's what some people think. A search for spiritual knowledge and understanding that the Lodge will never be able to give it. Why? Scripture tells us that Jesus only is the light. People believe, as a matter of fact, 
when you enter the entered apprentice, which is the very first degree, you are told. I'll share that with you in a moment. You are told to confess that you're looking for the light and that you're blind and that Freemason will be that light in your life. But yet it is the deepest darkness that you're ever getting into. But there's much more involved in Freemason. Freemason, Freemasons, men that enter Freemason, that take blood oaths and swear and get into at least the first three degrees, the Blue Lodge, it's like they are looking at an island. Think You and I think we live on an island. And, and you're going by on a boat. And you see the island. You see the surface of the island. But what you can't see is how deep this island is rooted down to the bottom of the ocean. All you see is the little surface piece on the top. That's what most men see in Freemason. They don't see the mountain of deep deception that is involved in Freemason. They just get to see the little tip of the iceberg that looks pretty and appealing to them. There are many forms of Freemason available to the public today. You have the Blue Lodge, which is the first three degrees. You have the York. You have the Scottish Rites. You have the Order of the Eastern Star. The Order of the Eastern Star is for women only. And then you have the Mystic Shrine. To be initiated into the first degree. We will go a little bit deeper, deeper with these degrees next week. To be initiated into the first degree, which is called Entered Apprentice. One is taken into a preparation room. You cannot get into the holy place before going into the preparation room. And by the way, the holy place is the lodge. So in that preparation room, the man is stripped naked. That's the very starting point. For what reason? Because it's psychological... They want you to understand you are entering Freemason with nothing to give but everything to receive. Secondly, you are given a two-piece white pajamas to put on. Remember now that this Freemason thing is mainly based on Kabbalah which is a twisted, perverted Jewish tradition. And so they are trying to mock Whatever God had in the Holy Bible. Because in the Aaronic priesthood in our Holy Bible, God commanded that they would put on white undergarments. So Freemason now copies this for all the wrong reasons. Thirdly, the person is blindfolded with a thick cloth under it so he doesn't know his surroundings. This is called hoodwinked. The word hoodwink means Deceived. A member of Freemason doesn't even know that that means deceived. And again, we're going to talk about that term hoodwink more next week. Finally then, the person is now prepared to enter the holy place, which is the lodge. Shh, don't tell anybody I tell you this. It's the most unholy place, but it is called the holy place. Then they are led into the holy place, which is the lodge hall. And then a question is asked to this man entering the first degree, which he does not know how to answer. And the person that has his hand guiding him and leading him will give him the answer that he must answer. So really what he is saying is not from his own heart. He is being told what to say. So when... They ask him the question, and this is the question. Why do you want to join the lodge? The person that is leading him by his hand tells him to say, I am a poor, blind, 
candidate desiring to be brought from darkness to light. So again, psychologically, they're training you. You are nobody. You're nothing. And Mason, Freemason, will make you into somebody. Again, that's God's job. That's the job of Jesus. Not an organization. A blue rope is tied around their neck and he is pulled forward. The color blue, remember I told you, is symbolic of the sky, the blue sky, the stars, and, and all the, 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 the stuff up there. Why? Because this is what pagans worship and adore. And Freemason, even though those involved in the first three degree will never know this, they are actually getting involved in a religion that is completely pagan. Then, a compass is placed to his heart and he is sharply pricked with the compass. Has anybody in here ever seen a compass before? The ge geometry compass? Yes. You know that that's quite pointed, right? So the person that wrote all of this information explains that when he was being initiated to the first degree, they actually stabbed him lightly with that compass and it deeply hurt. But that has a significance, which you'll hear in a moment. Then a voice says, so it will be if you presume to reveal the secrets of Freemason. In other words, that person they don't know what they're saying. They're just repeating. They think this thing is just a, a lot of words and just hurry up. I want to get involved. I want to get into this thing. But they don't realize the curses that they're bringing on themselves and their family, which we're going to talk about next week. So after they are stabbed lightly with that geometry instrument, they are then told, so will happen to you in your heart if you share any of the secrets that you know about Freemason. Then another question is asked of the man. In whom do you put your trust? Now remember, this man knows nothing about the lodge. So really he doesn't know what to answer. But the person who is leading him will tell him you must say God. The question is, which God, as we're going to find out in a moment. Then the man makes an oath kneeling on his left knee in the holy place before the altar with left hand under the Bible and the compass and the square on top of the Bible. And you're going to find out some serious meanings of these instruments in a short moment. The oath he takes is this. I bind myself under no less penalty than that of, listen, having my throat and the person does like this on his neck with his hand from ear to ear so he can feel what he is saying. I bind myself under no less penalty than that of having my throat cut from ear to ear if I reveal any secret. My tongue torn out by its root. Remember, all these things are disease and sickness that are being launched into the families. I'll share that with you next week. And then he says that my body buried in the sand of the sea. Still blindfolded. The man is told now, please cue in. Please cue in. The man is now told that he will kiss the Holy Bible to consummate his oath. Now, who, who wouldn't kiss the Bible? All religious people kiss the Bible. I've seen that. So this man now, completely blindfolded, puts his hand under the Bible with the compass and the square on top of the Bible. The Bible is open. And the man is now told, you are going to kiss the Bible to consummate your oath. What he is not told is that the Bible is open to the page in the Old Testament where Baal is making, they're making sacrifices unto Baal. 
Therefore, when he kisses that Bible, he is actually kissing the demon God called Baal. And he doesn't know that. But by that act, that demon Baal gets into the person and does his work. He is told from that time forward he will never be able to use the name of Jesus in the lodge again. No prayers. All the prayers that they pray in the lodge and they, they open with a prayer and they close with a prayer. The name of Jesus is never once mentioned. That's the end of Jesus for you in the lodge. Let's look at a few gods quickly of Freemason. Firstly, and one of the biggest gods in Freemason is Baal. Baal is the Canaanite false god of life, fertility, and rain. I want you to watch your outline how many times you see fertility, and I have it highlighted in black. The reason I did that is because everything else we're going to talk about now, after this, you'll see how sexual and demonic the lodge truly is. So Baal is the Canaanite false god of life and fertility and rain. Another god of Freemason is Anubis. He is a man with ram's head. Osiris, healing and rebirth, reincarnation, fertility, goddess of motherhood, magic. Notice the word fertility again. Then you have Isis, ancient Egyptian goddess, Goddess of love, you see it again, fertility, magic, and moon goddess. Then you have the god Tammuz, which is ancient Mesopotamian, notice again, fertility god. And then you have Krishna, which is one of the most revered fertility god in Hinduism. Then you have Sherez, symbol of immorality. So notice how many times you see the word fertility. How many gods of paganism involved fertility. Now, let's look at the symbols of Freemason. And there are many, many symbols. But I am taking the most important ones for you. So you can understand the horrendous true meaning of these symbols first of all you have the letter g has anybody in here ever seen that symbol from the freemason before that letter g within the middle of the compass and the square actually actually many men have it hanging around their neck or they have it on there as a bumper sticker or something like that but really and truly if you don't know what that symbol is it's quite an attractive symbol if you watch it on the chain of a man, it's beautiful, but cursed from hell. All right? The G is taught to the Blue Lodge. Remember now, the Blue Lodge is the first, second, and third degree. They're blind like a bat. They don't know anything about Freemason. They are told by Freemason that it symbolizes God. The G means God. But again, which God? The G is taught to the Blue Lodge that it also symbolizes geometry by which we may better understand nature and its designer. Now remember, if I am told this G represents God, cool, there's nothing wrong with that. I believe in God. Geometry to understand nature and how it came into being. Cool, there's nothing wrong with that. But that's what they're told as an external expression. But the G secretly represents the gen, gen, generative, meaning the procreative cycle of the female reproductive organ called the vagina generative organ that's what that g really means most freemason men don't know that they think 
I am celebrating God. Regardless of which God, I am celebrating God. But that G is the first letter of generative, meaning procreative cycle of the female reproductive organ, the vagina. The letter G in the Hebrew alphabet, alphabet is Yod. Yod represents deity in general. Its cosmic meaning refers to the stars and the sun. And the worshipped phallus in the earthly meaning. Can I ask you, do you have any idea what phallus means? Anybody? Do you have any idea what phallus means? Do you want me to tell you what phallus means? Are you sure? Are you ready for it? You're not going to faint? The word phallus means erected penis. Catch your breath, please. That's what the word yod, which in English is G, the secret meaning is the woman's vagina and also the phallus, which is the man's erected penis. The people, the men that get involved at the lower level will never know this. They think that they're becoming better men, even better Christian men. So the Yad, G, deity, phallus, is found in the mysterious book of the occult. A highly magical interpretation of the Old Testament that sorcerers and magicians use. That's why when you read the Bible in the Old Testament and you read about all the pagans and the Jews that had become pagans, you, you read many times in the Bible that there was temple prostitution. That, that they, they actually, as they worshipped their gods, they were having sex in the temple, on their altars, and then they killed the babies. This is where all of these practices from Freemason came from. Then you have the square. So what, what first symbol did we just take? The letter G. For what? The vagina. That's the hidden Meaning. And then the, the Hebrew version is the Yad, which is the phallus, which is? You guys are bashful now, aren't you? As long as you don't forget it, that's okay. The square of a mason. Now, men in here should know what a square looks like, right? I believe some woman also knows what a square looks like. Do you? It's a 90 degree angle piece of metal like this that you use when you're making a building to make sure that your 90 degree angle is straight. If not, when you put your plywood or your ply sem or your sheetrock, it's not going to fit because the angle is not well. So that's called a what? It's called a square. So let's, let's talk about what the square of a mason really is. Freemasons are taught that the square reminds them that they must be square, meaning fair and honest in their dealings with all men. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. If I am told that I have to be fair in my dealings with people, that's what God requires from us. But that's just the external outward meaning that they give the men that are entering the blue lodge. The compass, we'll get back to the square in a moment. We're going to tie it together with the compass and the square. The compass, Freemasons are taught that the compass reminds them that they must restrict their passions, control their desires, and be temperate. So again, there's nothing wrong with that. Who shouldn't have self-control? Everybody should. That's what they're told. But there are hidden meanings to these two instruments, the compass and the square. The real meaning of the square and the compass is very sexual. The square with its open ends facing up. Remember now, the square is a 90 degree. And then when it faces up like this. 
Everybody can see? Those of you from abroad? When the square is face up, and if you notice when a man is wearing it on their chain, it's exactly that way. So the square with its open ends facing up represents earth receiving the rays of the sun. This is what they're told. It represents the earth that is open to receive the rays of the sun. The hidden meaning, am I there? No. The compass with its open arm are, and tips represents the sun and its rays falling to the earth. So the square, which represents the earth, receives the ray, but the compass represents the sun and the rays coming down to the earth. But listen to the hidden meaning that most Freemason men never knows because they never venture beyond the third degree. The open square facing upward represents the opening of the woman's vagina as she lays on her back. The compass facing downward represents the man's erected penis. The compass on top of the square represents the earth being penetrated by the sun's ray of light and bringing about new life. The compass on top of the square represents the woman's vagina being penetrated by the man's erected penis bringing about new life. Curses, curses, curses. If you notice, I have the symbol there for you, very small. Right there on your paper. There's the compass and there's the square and there's the G in the middle. So that's the main symbol of Freemason that most men wear. Actually, this is burnt on the Bible's cover of the Freemason, this image. In the mystery religions of Osiris, Tammuz, Baal, the phallus, the male erected penis has been worshipped and the rituals climax with sexual union. This is going back to the Old Testament. Okay, so that's the G, that's the compass, that's the square. Now we want to take a look at the point with the circle inside. The mason of the blue lodge, which is again, first, second, third degree, because they don't know better. They are taught that the point within the circle represents the individual mason contained and restricted by the boundary line of their duties in Freemason. The real meaning, however, is that of the phallus again, the erected penis, that little dot in the circle, if you're watching it, that's the phallus position within the female vagina in a climax. I know you weren't prepared for this, but may the Lord help you. In the cosmic sense, it is the sun surrounded by the universe, which equals sun worship, pagan worship. And then you have the vertical lines. Look again, look again at your circle with the two lines. Do you see them? Do you see them? Yes. Okay. So, where are we here? The real, okay. So the vertical lines touching the sides of the circle are presented to the Blue Lodge Masons as the Holy Saints, John the Baptist and John the Apostle. But they represent the summer, winter solstices, which is the peak and the shortest and largest nights of the year. This happens twice a year. These are the Cancer and Capricorn signs in the Zodiac. And listen intently. These are two important nights for pagan worship. Of all the nights in the year, two nights between summer and winter are chosen where witches actually do their greatest incantation, their sacrifices, and their Satan worship. This is what the circle and the two lines actually mean. But they are told to the Freemason that you're dealing with John the Baptist and John the Revelator. Then you have the Bible. The Bible is only one of the three great lights in Freemason. The compass and the square 
are the two other great lights. So listen, I don't know if you got this. Do you get this? The Bible is considered one of the great lights. But also the square and also the compass are considered great lights. Now, the compass means the erected penis. The square represents the vagina. But these are the great lights. That is equal with the Bible. Are you getting it? Christ is excluded. The Bible and its authority is demoted to sexual immorality. The Bible is presented to the Blue Lodge as symbolizing the truth. In other words, the Bible is a good thing. That's what they tell Freemasons. But in truth, they say the Quran or any other holy book of any religion in the world can easily replace it, especially the Kabbalah. And the Kabbalah is the perverted pagan mystic book of pagans of all, which is also. So really then in Freemason, even though they talk about the Bible, the Bible is just an artifact. For the Freemasons. Given a choice. Listen carefully. Because most men would say. Well I am a Christian. But I am also a Freemason. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you put them in a bind. And you tell them. You have to make a choice. A hundred percent of the time. They will choose Lodge. Over Christianity. Which means that is their God. Then you have the equilateral triangle. That's the triangle with all three sides equal. All right? You were taught that in school. The equilateral triangle is presented to the Blue Lodge as the triune God, what Christians call the Holy Trinity. But the hidden meaning is pagan and, again, sexual. The baseline down and the point up, in other words, look at me, the triangle, like this from the point opening up down. In other words, the wide end sitting down with the tip up is what? The phallus again. The penis, the erected penis. That's what the equilateral triangle with the wide part down represents for Freemason. The baseline up, which is the wider part up and the point down, the open Female vagina. When the two are combined in, it forms the six-point star that represents sexual union. Now, I don't know how observant you are or, or how much research you may ever do. Or maybe if you watch any documentaries. But whenever satanic things are being done, there's always like a goat head. And then in the background, there is a six-point star. That six-point star are two equilateral triangle, one with the point facing up and one with the point facing down. And this combined represents the sexual union of the man and the woman. Then you have the all-seeing eye. The all-seeing eye. If you have a U.S. dollar on you, you'll find it on the U.S. dollar. And many people have it on their chain. Some have it tattooed on their head, on their arm. They have it as a good luck charm somewhere with them. That all-seeing eye is presented to the Blue Lodge as the eye of God. You're protected, you're watched over. God is always looking out for you. But the hidden meaning is Osiris, the Egyptian sun and sex God. It is the actual object of worship in the Masonic Lodge. Did you get it? How many of you knew these things before it was taught to you tonight? How, do this unashamedly, please. 
You don't have to be ashamed. By the way, next week, we're going to be praying a deep, lengthy prayer to break the curse of this thing. Because you're going to learn next week how cursed you are and how cursed the family is that has become a part of Freemason. Has anybody in here ever been involved in Freemason before? Can I see your hand? It's nothing to be ashamed about. People all around the world gets involved in this. Nobody. Does anybody know of someone who is involved in Freemason? That's getting better. Let me see if I can ask another question where all hands will go up. Freemason is as demonic as it comes. Later, next week, you're going to find out how deeply demonic it really is with the blood oaths and the doctrines that they have for this religion. They don't call it a religion, but it is a religion by all means. So tonight, I won't be praying for anybody. I want you to think about all that you've learned. And if you know somebody, which many hands went up, those of you watching from around Belize and around the world, if you know somebody that is involved in Freemason, I want you to start to pray for them because only God can free them. And if you, those of you watching from abroad, around Belize, if you have been involved in Freemason, it's time to start to renounce and to pray that God would break these curses from your family's life because you are in serious, serious danger as it pertains to the demonic. So let's just close our eyes tonight, bow our heads, and let's pray. Those of us that have never been involved, and you say your dad has never been involved, you don't know any of your bloodline that was involved, it's time to thank God. But if your father, your uncle, your grandfather, great-grandfather was involved in Freemason, you definitely want to tune in next week again. You want to be here next week. Because you're going to learn the depths of the demonic. And you're going to learn how cursed your family members are. But more importantly, how you can break that curse sincerely. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Those of you watching from around Belize and around the world. Bow your heads and close your eyes. If you watching from abroad was involved in Freemason, or your dad was, or your grandpa was, tune in again next week and we're going to find freedom. We're going to be breaking those curses off of you and your family. And pray that your dad or your grandpa would come to know the Lord, because only the Lord can do that. Precious Heavenly Father, we love you and we adore you. We thank you and praise you. Lord, again, we pray for men that are involved in Freemason. Most of them do not know what I just taught. They think that they're involved in something good, but behind the scenes, curses are being launched. We pray for these men, Lord, that somehow enlightenment would come to them, that you would tug at their heart and bring the truth to them that they would be set free, that they would renounce and walk away from the dark world of Freemason. Lord, we pray for people that are watching at this moment that they would find peace with you and they would not fare, but believe that you're able to break these curses and remove the sicknesses that have come into their family bloodline for generations to come. So Lord, we humble ourselves. We surrender to you. We thank you for those of us that were never involved, that you've spared us from that. And for those of us that have a family member, Lord, we pray that you would move into this bloodline and do a glorious work that only you can do. Lord, we thank you and praise you that when Jesus died on that cross, he brought us freedom and we will not accept bondage. We thank you and praise you in the name of Jesus and everybody said, Amen. Praise God.